Hello guys, this is Arthur Rent and in this video I am going to take a picture of a galaxy. I'm gonna take advantage of this clear sky finally and I'm going to take a picture of the boat and the cigar galaxy which are two beautiful galaxies close to each other in the constellation Ursa Major. As you can see here right next to me I have my rig which is a little bit complicated and uh, it has more things than my previous one with the Celestron Travel Scope and the EQ3 mount so let's head into this part and explain how it will work tonight so firstly the main telescope I'm going to use tonight is the Skywatcher 150p which is a Newtonian telescope with parabolic mirrors which is something really important for astrophotography and visual observation as it has high quality optics and something you won't believe is that it is in the same price range with some other telescopes with, which have the Bird Jones optics which I was a user of and uh, yeah it wasn't that good now let's move to the mount which is a Skywatcher EQ3 mount I am using a motor drive in order to track the night sky in both array and declination axis. This is gonna help me a lot with guiding and more precise tracking accuracy. Now on to the camera part. I am going to use the Canon EOS 4000D. I know it has an APS-C sensor, prop uh, frame sensor, which is large, but in this particular project we want it to be like that in the view because these two galaxies just cannot be imaged with a camera like the ZWDO ASI224 which is a planetary camera with a small sensor so we don't want that this camera is modified for astrophotography it has hydrogen alpha uh, sensitivity which is something we want in this project because the cigar galaxy has large emissions of hydrogen alpha in the side parts so we want that totally and uh, we will get more signal and more details which is what we want in astrophotography if you can see up here after two and a half years of doing astrophotography with entry level equipment like smartphone through binoculars smartphone through untracked altazimuth mount and the Bert Jones telescope and just a simple telescope camera and tracking mount I am finally moving to the step thank god on guiding so now I'm just gonna get longer exposures with best start most of the frames are gonna be okay but I think that at most I'm gonna I'm gonna throw to the bin just like five or six frames the main part of the guiding is the guide scope I got today so this is how it goes tonight so this year I dedicate my life to get a nice image of the Bodge Galaxy man my previous shot was bad but I think I am justified because I was using a non-tracking mount and a telescope as you can see here it's still daytime and I really like the transparency to be honest I hope that what I expect is gonna be the truth Okay, so after a night of collecting about 2 hours of data because I had some problems with guiding I am here now on my laptop and I am watching now the stacked file on the boats and the cigar galaxy. As you can see here, this is the stacked file of 3 hours of total exposure. Yesterday I collected uh, good data. So this is the file, you can see it's red because of the modification. And this time I stacked on Deep Sky Stacker because Cyril didn't work well. So this is how it looks. The stars are way better than some other projects. Still not perfect, but they are better. Okay. 
And this is how it looks on auto stretch and this is how it looks on the linear state you, you just see the brightest parts of these two galaxies and if I stretch on Azain you can see the spirals of the Bode's galaxy are not that much visible but they are a bit and on the cigar you can see more details so now let's move to the starless file which is this one this starless file and you can see on the linear state it looks like this note you cannot see stars because it's starless and you can see just the bright portions of these two galaxies if I stretch now on Azine you can see more details you can see that the core is better it has some nice details around it and on the cigar too you can see some more details now and if I stretch on auto stretch you can see that this is the best I have got you can see some dust around the image because the flats didn't work well and I have too much dust on my camera sensor which I don't know how to remove so if you have any ideas you can write a comment and tell me in order to help me combat this dust let's move now to the final result